Have I not read a single book that has made me happy? This is tragic. Broke my brain, it broke my body, it broke everything, broke my soul. Huge disappointment. Tower ball. What? No, no, no. Do I know what it's about? No. The patrons know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not, gonna say it. I'm not putting that energy into the universe. <laughs> Hello, it's Katie Colson here. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. And we are doing the famous mid-year book freak out tag. Now, the way I'm gonna change it up uh, and do it this year is that I'm not going to pre- record, pre-decide what it is that I'm answering for these questions. And I always forget a couple of the questions, even though there's only like 10 every year. So you'd think that like, I'd be thinking about it at this point, but our little bird brain doesn't have time for those kind of thoughts. It doesn't. It doesn't have time for that, okay? It's too busy thinking about Vanderpump Rules, in which I know it's over, but I can't stop thinking about it. Y'all, if you do not, I don't care if you don't watch reality TV, just watch the reunion of Vanderpump Rules. I'm telling you, it's good freaking soup. It's good soup. Anyway, I have the questions right here. I just copied and pasted that it from a different video and I'm going to answer them in real time with you. So sorry if I get a little rambly, but let's see. Mid-year book freak out. Question number one, best book you've read so far. Oh, I lent it. I lent it to the host at my job. Okay. So I have two. The, I have two that I'm like, I don't know which one is better. Olivia Blake's Alone With You in the Ether and also Any Man by Amber Tamblyn. I'm kind of of the mind that Any Man just ekes this out, but both of them are absolutely stunningly written. Like, good God, they're prose and poetry combined. This one in more of an analytic sense, and then Any Man in more of a traumatic poetry kind of sense. So in brief, Alone With You in the Ether is, it's not a romance, it's a love story between these two characters that are both uh, neurodivergent, and are suffering from different mental disorders and they meet each other and kind of find solace in each other and a way to help each other deal with what they're going through and they go about it in such an interesting way and uh the characters suffer from mental disorders that olivia blake also suffers with and the way that she depicted it is just absolutely stunning and the quotes in this will keep you up at night good god and then any man by amber tamblin is also a book that will oh when i say keep you up at night it is such a short book it's a four hour long audiobook okay and when i tell you it took me from uh 7 p.m until 5 a.m to read it because it broke my brain it broke my body it broke everything broke my soul it's a very triggering book i really caution you to look into what the book is about before going into it and amber tamlin she doesn't startle you with it the back of the book tells you that it's about essay it's about our wording it's about that but it's about a woman doing it to a man and how society and doctors uh courts um families friends will treat these men and react to them based on this happening. But seeing it through a male's perspective and seeing how society would treat men based on this is very eye-opening. And I really, really hope that men read this because this is something that does happen to men and that they don't need to be so afraid of talking about. So I think that Amber Tamblyn really did a service by putting this book out there. And again, please, please don't go into it if you don't think you can handle it because it is violent it is violent but it is stunningly written like it will make you cry it'll make you scream it'll also make you laugh it'll make you happy it'll make you sad it'll make you everything so oh my god i'm already going on and on and on it's only the first question question two best sequel you've read so far best sequel the sinister revenge by deanna rayborn the eighth in the veronica speedwell series i had kind of a falling out with what is it the impossible imposter or no 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 an unexpected peril was just eh it was okay but everything else was amazing and i ended up rereading this series and reading book eight and absolutely loving it loving it it was a call back to arms it was just what you were expecting when you went into the first couple books i really loved it i'm not gonna get into what this series is about because i've talked about it so many times but i loved it okay 
Number three is new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Oh, okay. We've got a couple. Um, well, that's not new. This one. I need to read Fourth Wing. I'm supposed to be reading it this month. Um, Amy, one of my patrons, read it, absolutely loved it. And she sent me the audiobook and said that the Sprayed Edge first editions were sold out everywhere. But when I went to Florida, I ended up finding one at a out of the way bookstore. And I need to read this because literally every one of my patrons is reading it. Literally all of them are reading this book. So I need to read this. Is there another one that I... Oh, I need to read, here we go. This one's new and I still haven't read it. I need to read Immortality, A Love Story. Um, it is the sequel to Anatomy, A Love Story, both by Dana Schwartz. And I really liked this. I gave it four or four and a half stars. And it's a YA and it's only a duology. But the only reason I haven't started this yet is because I want to reread Anatomy first, which might be a good idea or it might be a bad idea. I don't honestly know. But this is what I want to read for my new releases. Book four, or question four, is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Hold, please. I need to look at my book journal. Baby, I'm back. Okay, I have it listed here somewhere about my most anticipated releases. Um, wow, I've done really good. Ooh, 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 A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. I'll read anything this woman writes. I do not care. I do not care. I don't care if I only give it three stars. It's still going to be a damn good time. So I definitely think, do I know what it's about? No, but I don't care because again, I will literally read anything this woman writes. She is chaotic. She's unhinged. The next one is the biggest disappointment. The biggest dis- <laughs> patrons know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. They know what I want to say. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not putting that energy into the universe. Um, is there a different answer I can give and not hate myself? Oh, I was very disappointed by Our Wives Under the Sea, but not because it's bad. Um, it just wasn't for me. And I really thought that it would be, and I just didn't really like it. Um, also, Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I don't get the hype. I don't get the hype. It's not a bad book, but like, I don't think it's good. I'm sorry. Biggest surprise. Oh, alone with you neither. I can't believe I'm telling you that I ate this up. No crumbs. I ate this up. I freaking adored it. Favorite new author. I mean, am I beating a dead horse? Olivia Blake. I've read so many of her books this year. I read The Atlas Six. I read The Atlas Paradox. I read this. I read La Petite Mort. Um, I have The Lover's Grimm, which I want to read. And then also this month, yeah, this month, um, One for My Enemy by Libby Blake is my Patreon book club pick. And uh, Alice, uh, um, Allie from Hardback Quarter and uh, Jordaline from Jordaline Reads and I are doing a co-op um, buddy book club read of that book. Wow, could I be more convoluted when I'm talking right now? Okay, um, newest fictional crush. Okay, well, it's not new, but Stoker. Stoker, obviously, from Veronica's Speedball. I, I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, I'm obsessed. And it's, it's never going to die. It's never going to die. Newest favorite character. Um, newest favorite character? I mean, it's not new. But I reread The Hunger Games and Katniss really is that bitch. She really is that bitch. Like, that series holds up. That series holds up. And honestly, I could say Catching Fire for best sequel because I think that it might be better than the first book, which is shocking. So, shock among shocks. Book that made you cry. Uh, Any Man by Amber Chamberlain. If you read that book, the letter, the letter that little Jimmy writes to Donald, I cried. I cried reading that book. And then let me see. I did. I definitely cried reading the Hunger Games series a couple times. Not like like crying, but like oh my god, emotion. I feel like there was something else that made me cry a bit, but I don't remember. But definitely Any Man. God, uh, book that made you happy. Book that made me happy. I feel like all the ones I've loved so far 
have been things that like are sad. Like alone with you the ether is sad. What's a book that made me happy? Katie, why is it so hard for you to answer this question right now? A book that made you happy. One second, let me let my brain process this. Okay, well, while I'm scrolling through the books that I've read in 2023, I do also want to say that What Lies in the Woods, huge disappointment. Huge disappointment. Tower ball. Before the coffee gets cold, huge disappointment. What? No, no, no. Lessons in chemistry? Bombastic side eye. Have I not read a single book that has made me happy? This is tragic. I remember the first time we met face to face. Kiss on my neck. How could I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm there's definitely books I've loved but I'm not seeing any that have made me happy. That is very sad. Well, well, okay, that's not true. That's not true. I did a whole reading vlog, I'll um, link it, on the Veronica Speedball series, and that brought me a lot of joy. A lot of joy in a time when I really needed it. So yeah, that would be the obvious answer. And I believe those are all of the questions. I didn't miss anything, right? Okay, so this was originally created by Is That Chammy and Earl Grey books. So I'll have them linked down below. They were the originators of this tag. If you are going to do this tag, please tag me at Katie Colson, little at sign, Katie Colson, tag me in the bio um, description of the video so that I will get alerted. That's the only way that I really get alerted to other videos. So please do that. I love watching these. I hope that this spur of the moment, like not reckless, but like spontaneous or whatever video worked for this. I'm sorry if it was very convoluted. I should have assumed that it would be, but listen, we're here for the chaotic energy, okay? So if you've gotten this far into the video, leave for the chaotic energy, leave the face with the circling, spiraling eyes of like person that's like, what's happening? Leave that down below to let me know that you've gotten to the end of the video. That being said, if you want to follow me on Goodreads or Instagram, you always could. The links are down below as well as a link to my Patreon. If you've ever wanted to spend more time with me and do reading sprints with me and actually be on them with me, because that's something we have started doing recently and absolutely loving getting to meet more face to face and genuinely talk face to face, which has been really fun. All of that being said, I hope all of you are having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy ends break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best above all.